Yes, uh, good morning everybody. Um, yes, I hope that we will be able to say and present something sensible because we did not really have a lot of time to prepare this presentation. But I may not complain because I'm part of the group who made this program. So. <laughs> um, also to talk about institutions today, which is uh, quite something because I'm sure we could do two more conferences to clarify what is an institution. Um, so, but um, we were actually asked by Marcel to um, talk a little bit about our positioning in the conflict, uh, in this local conflict. Some of you are very familiar with, of course, uh, um, of Stuttgart 21. Um, so, so our presentation will be sort of focused on that. Um, and I start with a little um, statement just to, to open the, the map, the landscape. Um, and when I say institution, uh, I mean I, I'm not going to clarify what is an institution. I basically mean um, an art institution and specifically the one we are directing and how we understand uh, this, this infrastructure. So the, the Kunstverein founded in 1827. Today is conceived as a place for the open and also controversial investigation of the manifold methods and practices of contemporary art, including wide-ranging social-political fields of reference. Of equal importance are exhibitions and discourse, art and theory, research and production. What we like to offer and to share is the space and its time that it extends beyond the simple viewing of art, a space and time where art and the relations between art, artists, the institution, so us, the public and public life, are subject to a continual renegotiation. In our view, there is no ideal status quo of an institution. Instead, an institution should, as we think, be related to a constant process of this negotiation, of conflict, disagreement, etc., as there will be always something and someone you are excluding, something or someone you are doing wrong, that you were not expecting, that you are not prepared of. If not, we would rather call this a situation of totalitarianism. So what I mean is, as an institution, I mean, even if you have very much ideal ideas, um, you're always with one feet uh, on the wrong side, and probably with the other side in the jail, but this is another um, discussion. So maybe the unexpected and the disobedient guest, concretely and metaphorically, is the best visitor of any institution. He, she, might tell us something we don't know, we were ignoring, we were not prepared of. This could be an artist, a work, a recipient, a user of the institution. Um, so for, for, and for me this disobedience with the unexpected is very important, this relation, because um, it's doing something which we are not allowed to, doing something which we are not expected to do. So this is maybe something which has to do with disobedience. This, this um, unexpected or disobedient guest might appear as this voice of, of the other, of which Ranjit Hoskoti, uh, um, an Indian writer, said, I quote, It arrives suddenly and without warning. It disrupts rather than smoothening the, text, the texture of the listener's experience. It demands that the listener engage with its meaning in a full-bodied manner, placing in his or her entire being on the hazard. The act of attending to such a voice, the voice of the other, the, the sometimes sublime and terrifying others, breaks and remakes the attending self. This unexpected guest could also be uh, one of these new structures, communities, uh, um, groups, even institutions we might say, that, appears, that appear because something is missing. That is all the alternative art spaces, the alternative schools, net art, uh, public intervention, so all the formats and, and groups that are, that are found finding themselves because something is missing, there is a lack of interest. I mean, every reading group is, is coming together because maybe they are not teached what they would, are like to be teached. Mm. So in one sense one could say that the big institution, so the official institution in the sense of the big machineries of knowledge, of discourse and attention, need to be constantly called into question by those alternative 
unexpected, unexpected structures that arise because there is a lack, because something is missing, and that give voice and visi visibility to the network. <laughs> but at this point, it's, it's very important that it's not about integrating all these other structures, all these alternative uh, um, 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 organizations, groups, communities, initiatives. It's more um, to, to have this, this open network together and not this uh, trying to embrace it in the, in the sense of a mega structure of a monster institution. Um, so I, I remember, for example, uh, all the discussions we had uh, in, the, in the 90s if, if it makes sense to present net art uh, in the art gallery. Much of you know these this long discussions. And, um, I think the thing is, of course, the net art needs another environment. It needs the internet. It, it had the reason that, that people were going there. Her book was yesterday very precisely explaining this, uh, refusing the art market, etc. But in a, in a way, I think it's important to, to show at an art institution that something like this has happened, that this is part of art history um, or, or of contemporary art or whatsoever. Uh, the, the point is how you make it clear that, that, um, that when you show net art in the, in the art gallery, this is not about authenticity. This is something very artificial. And when I was rethinking this image book showed yesterday this poor image of the computers at the, at the documenta, a really, really, uh, very, very um, painful image, but finally I thought maybe it's the right way to show that art, to make it very clear that this is not the authentic place, that this is a very um, strange environment. Um, so I remember when we put the first computer in an art exhibition, people would say, but this looks like my working place, and I said maybe it's not too bad. To, to, to clarify that uh, originality, authenticity is one discourse of the art context, but maybe um, this kind of, of alien thing uh, which we are trying to talk about, that this is not, nothing that belongs to you. So it stays with this alienation and maybe that's not too bad. And then of course on the other hand, so, so you can somehow find a way how to, how to work or how to deal with these unexpected guests, but of course as an institution you should be yourself that, that unexpected, that, that, that disobedient um, person once in a while. That can be very simple uh, that you act against this, this crazy pressure of visitors' numbers. Um, or that you, you act against this insupportable imperative uh, of audacity. It's not about audacity today, it's about generosity and even about dissipation. So, so we should not always believe that there is no money because that's not true. And of course you should find a position against censorship. Uh, for, there's a lot of censorship around art which is related to copyright. And all this hysterical discourse about copyright and, and you have all these institutions who even don't dare to take a position, um, and, and there's too much anticipatory of it. Of it. <laughs> I cannot talk anymore at this story. There's too much anticipatory obedience. You know what I mean? For us, I like a war, Instead of really fighting uh, at this moment, um, that could be this one leg like, that is pro probably in jail, but. It's, it's really about taking that dangerous sometimes. And in this context we, we um, also took this position in, in, in regards to a local conflict when we were actually asked to be neutral and uh, that was expected from us but this was not really what we did. Okay. <laughs> but, um, this is my most uncomfortable position in in uh, conferences, because I don't have a text. I won't read from a paper because I don't want to have the same problem like Iris, but I have to pronounce vocabularies which I'm not used to use in English. Thank you very much. Was <laughs> 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 it that bad? Every time I'm so surprised how you manage. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, that's why I also projected this sentence, because if I'm using this, uh, this term spatiality, if I'm speaking about space, I have a certain thing in my mind which is hardly for me uh, to explain with my limited possibilities in this language which we call this uh, uh, 
form of, of communication when, when, when I try to speak English. So when I use, uh, when I use the, the term space and speciality, I have a line of aliens uh, in my mind which alienate every time also my relationship, my physical, my mental, uh, my ideological relationship uh, with the situation and the space where I am in. So this is a permanently flux and I think it's very interesting to uh, describe already by Leibniz and then going this line along uh, to uh, Deleuze but uh, for me in this context maybe it's more important to have in mind this uh, three divisions of space which is the space of representation, the space in which I represent or the space in which I have a certain kind of a special practice. So when we're speaking about space, maybe we should make it for the foreigners a little bit more concrete. This is here the Kunstverein. This is the main shopping street, the main square, the new castle with the Ministry of Finance in, uh, the uh, regional parliament, uh, the state opera, the state gallery, the more regional oriented museum, Kunstmuseum. So the Kunstverein, and you have this nice lake here, which was before a baroque lake and uh, in, a, in this oval form, and then the, the person who redesigned the city after the Second World War said everything which is symmetric is fascism, so we changed it. So this is, uh, this is a space full of ideological connotations and luckily, and this is I would say one of the luxury uh, possibilities for the Kunstverein, we are in the middle of it. Um, okay. This has some effects, some effects when we are speaking about the condition of a practice and of the condition of, of uh, the representation. This is in May 1968, the opening uh, weekend of the Bauhaus, 50 years of Bauhaus exhibition in the Württembergische Kunstwerk. On the uh, right side you see Walter Gropius speaking to a group of uh, students who are demonstrating against the shutdown of the design school in Ulm, which was a kind of a following up school of uh, the Bauhaus or was sort of this. On the left side you see at the same weekend, uh, the president of uh, the Federal Republic of Germany coming for the opening, who will hear at the end of the day an opening speech by Walter Gropius. Uh, this is Lübke, he was very famous in Germany for very intelligent greetings to a public at one example in a conference with Africans. He <laughs> said, hello, ladies and gentlemen, Negroes and Negroes. <laughs> uh, so when he, when, he, and when he is on this space, the space, and you're looking careful on this image, the space is surrounded and protected by Mercedes car. This is in 1968, and you still have clearly here emerging, which is full in power again in Germany after the Second World War, is emerging between the military and industrial complex. So if he's speaking about special practices and representation and self-representation in space, we have to analyze the space permanently in this flux, even with the background of history. And that's why in an exhibition, and I really every time forget, forget the subtitle, so I wrote it down, in an exhibition, Oh My Complex, on Uneasy at Beholding the City, uh, we integrated a piece by uh, a colleague, uh, nearly not so much people speaking about it, but for me it's a very important person, Michael Fair was one of the uh, persons who theoretized the work in museums not under the perspective of the collected object, but under the structure of a collection. This is a very interesting shift he integrated in this discussion. And he made in 1977 an exhibition uh, called uh, To Live Beyond the Modern Life, the rationalization of the life in the modern city. Uh, we reconstructed this in this science this, uh, exhibition for the uh, mentioned exhibition. And there were a lot of uh, interesting boards in this. But one example, simple, simple things like uh, if you want to realize that in Williams our interest, uh, we, we must create solidarity, resistance. Or, 
uh, we are identified by a more generalizing uh, structure of the Technical Survival Association, which gives us standards. And to mention this, we totally forgot about this, is in this sheet of 1977, so it has to, a lot to do with what we discussed the last days, is mentioned this is a clear model. This knowledge creates a totally monopolistic perspective on how we will create our uh, future and uh, technology in the future. He was very precise and I love that this is the case, the formula, uh, the record. The museum was blocked with this tent and people could make announcements on it. Inside there were the sports and also uh, a lot of in interactive possibilities for NGOs the German term for it at this time in the 70s was Bürgerinitiative. Uh, it was a kind of an association of civics who react very locally on a certain kind of issue. At one example, at this time, very massive in the world would be the transformation from individual housing to social housing. And these people met there and they used the space. It's, it's in 1977 already a complete transformation of the museum into another uh, form of use. So when we're speaking about the institution, maybe sometimes we also should uh, see more, and not only the documenta when it was transformed into this, the, the, the big icons, but a lot of people were at, at this time uh, interpreting already uh, what we're sometimes complaining about, but they start already in the 70s to interpret the institution very heavily in a different icon. This was in the, in, under the law of emergency in Germany and Michael Fair lost his job because he was under the su su suspicion to be a communist. Um, <coughs> well, he, win, he, win, he won the trial and they have to take him back. Um, in, was he a communist? Huh? He, was said, he said clearly this was not a political exhibition. It was one for the communities. I don't know, this is, uh, maybe this is another talk about this uh, very specific relationship of West Germany with the idea of communism and uh, that they put, put 50,000 15, people in prison uh, in the 50s when they forbid uh, the Communist Party of Germany. And that this big member of the party uh, meeting Justice they know already from a uh, trial when they were sent to the concentration camps in the satellite. So this is uh, a history, it's not very much known, but in any case. So uh, to take that, and now I'm becoming more and more in, in this local context, um, as one of the points where we also spoke in the last three days about certain kind of strategies, how we're using the media landscape. In, in interacting with uh, certain communities. In 2009, uh, as, as when the long wave uh, of the financial crisis also ends up in the rich southwest of Germany, uh, they started with cutdowns in the cultural budget. <coughs> and there was not a reaction in the more poor areas of Germany, very strange enough, but here it was uh, that we got a letter, we opened the mail and then there was a letter saying 10% 10, 10 cutdown. Well, not announcement, no discussion. So we scanned the letter, put it online, and asked who else got this letter. <laughs> then we met everybody, and nearly everybody got it. Uh, we made a first meeting with everybody who got this letter. And out of the meeting, we also identified the one who don't get the letter. Uh, this means we invited them. We said, you, as cultural institution, you are not excluded from our resistance against this cutdown. We invite you to go with us along. Because we are not speaking about, in general, a concurrence between cultural institutions. We are speaking about, if you want only one example, 12 kilometers highway was the same like all virtual institutes worldwide. So we are speaking about priorities. So out of this meeting, uh, we established then with Daniel E. Stuttgart. Uh, this was a blog which was at this time anonymous and, and this works quite well for the time. And uh, at the end of the story, there was another associate, association who made.
make different meetings and organize it like this uh, Club Kunst plus plus A. And then we have had this gathering on, in front of the mayor house with 3,000 people. And they reduced the cut down by, uh, from the 10 to 5%. And even institutions which were under the uh, pressure to, when they lose the 5%, to close down completely, uh, they figured out a system that they, even don't, that they didn't get any cut down. And this was a system, uh, Shantar Muf now said also about the, the Arab Spring. The Arab Spring was not happening in the internet. Absolutely not. This was for the bourgeois upper class internet. Uh, for the proletariat and the labor, it was a local TV station in Gaia. And it's happened by proclaiming the street. The politicians only realized that there is, was a potential of resistance, not that they got a block with a million hints. They realized that by the physical occupation of space. Um, this, because by this, this takes an institution completely, so we skip one exhibition. We said we have to be concentrated uh, on this resistance uh, development uh, and to have a discussion. So we skipped the member exhibition. And then we done the member exhibition under the title Art and Society. And the nice things we have in the, in the uh, we, at this time there were also uh, um, exhibitions like. Ice Age, something like that. Sometimes we have to give up the house and we have not only one more. And the group of artists recycles the complete inner architecture of uh, this blockbuster exhibition and made this uh, meeting point. And in, uh, when we have this member exhibition, we have the Kunstverein has 3,000 members, 50% are artists. And when we make the member exhibition, we also give them the opportunity to choose speakers uh, from whom they're thinking would be interesting to have a talk at the evening in the Kunstverein. And it's where the members of the Kunstverein who invited mainly speakers from the resistance against Stuttgart 21. So again, this was not something which comes in, into the institute. Of course, they know our political position. This is not, we don't hide that. But it was clearly uh, that we established uh, a situation where first, uh, this discussion is coming in by the membership of the association. And of course, we're speaking in the, in the Kunstverein a lot about politics, a lot about global uh, and special practices, a lot about open source and this kind of stuff. And we've done a, an exhibition about uh, a concept was from Kai Kose, uh, about uh, political design. And then to have the resistance around your house and speaking about resistance in Korea, India, or Thailand, but not what is directly in front of your door is a little too ridiculous. So in, in this uh, exhibition, which was organized by sections, this is a, a, a Thai, uh, set, uh, we organized an exhibition, The Art of Not Being Governed, like that. Uh, this was, the title came, is from Foucault, of course. Uh, but at least uh, it's a good friend of us, we're working a lot together with her. She's a city planner and uh, uh, specialized in, in gender and uh, feministic studies about the cities. This work was on her t shirt on demonstrations against Stuttgart 21. This sentence. Um, the, one of the reactions when we announced this exhibition was immediately to say, okay, the resistance goes to the museum. Now it's done, it's over, it's killed. It's a very, this is the common idea of the museum and the art institution, institution is at least to kill any idea of the resistance. It's the uh, imagination of the art institution still today is to say, now it gets this encapsulated container in which, uh, it's like this in psychiatry where when someone is freaking out to put it in the cell where everything is from, from uh, plastic, I don't know, but it's boomy, rubber. So. I mean, uh, we did not make an exhibition about Stuttgart 21, but the idea was that we had these different sections, so the exhibition was planned with different sections dealing with Korea, so with um, Thailand, etc. And so we reserved one section for, for this context, because what Han said, we, we thought it's impossible to talk about resistance at that moment. Uh, when you saw also the, the, the where, where the Kunstverein is located, so we were really in the midst of all these protests, so it was clear that uh, 
we cannot just neglect it, but also we had our own position in that um, conflict. I mean, this was not only that we said we must mirror it or give it a space, but we ourselves saw that really some democratic um, um, ground laws were, were in danger. Yeah, and a big part in this exhibition was about the image machinery, how you sell architecture. So with the, this was very important also to give the people a little bit an idea of what kind, because it's, it's so overwhelming what's, what's this, this counter side. They have a lot of money, what they produce as image machine. Or maybe we should just briefly, because we always think that we don't need to explain to anyone because it already knows, <laughs> oh, well, everybody knows, but just very briefly, it's, it's, a, it's a huge uh, urban and traffic mega project which costs like 10 billion euros. Uh, I mean, they say 8 billion, but it's maybe 10 billion. So they it's still on 6.5. So, and, and um, which is actually what is always, because it's the idea to put the train station underneath the earth, and what is in all uh, cities where you have these transitions to put an infrastructure underneath the earth, it's because of real estate interest, of course. And, uh, and the conflict was born out of many different. Um, um, Protests, uh, interests. I mean, it would be it would be too long to, to explain all of this. But but the very interesting thing of this movement uh, was and still is that it came out of very different contexts. So there was not a big we, but there were different uh, approaches. Why right? people? Some were wanted to protect the park, others the, the spa, the mineral water. So so there were uh, others. It was about the money. Others about some democratic issues, so, so there was a very um, big variety of, of voices actually from that protest. At one example there was some, the myth that, that this protest starts uh, uh, with a more sentimental moment when they cut some trees or something like that. The protest starts with the first concept for the train station. Mm -hmm. So we made also, Yvonne uh, developed this timeline, Harry Walter is there, and this timeline at the end was again in the park, uh, at, the, at the pavilion, which was organized from, from, from artists here from, from the city, uh, and so on. Um, there were, of course, some polemics in, in, in this exhibition. Also, you have this uh, nice image of Schröder and Putin and uh, Sarkozy uh, and Merkel, and of course, you have the uh, islands. This is from, from a post capital archive uh, in the Iraq. Inform the people about the interrelationships of uh, lobbyism uh, and corruption in the context of building uh, industries. Uh, the drawing in it is, uh, is a gift from, for the resistance from uh, Jan Pajowski, this capitalism. Uh, and then there were tools, and these tools, um, well, okay, going back. Um, there were more of these this drawings, but then the drawings also, this was one of the people who were living in the park, he built an our partner workshop with this billboard, and then he retransferred the drawing by Dan Pajoski into the park, and they created there again, they, they create their own life. With the permission by Dan Pajoski. Yeah. So he said that people from the resistance could use it, and then they... Then Iris already mentioned this by variety. Of course, this is a modern protester. You have your Calvin <laughs> Klein under trousers, you have your iPod, you have your Stuttgart 21 ticket uh, sticker, <laughs> and you have your Clockwork Orange uh, uh, shirt. This is a photo by No Sun Tech. Uh, uh, he was at that time also on one of this demonstration, he was involved in the redesign, as a photographer from Korea. Or you have this other extreme, this very conservative <laughs> extreme. Not before I will die, I want to go under the earth. It's written on this, on this label. Uh, and to say the truth, but this is for it. Then, step by step, it was absolutely not by a member realized that we do that, that we have this open situation, that they start to ask uh, is your space open and free for gatherings? Um, uh, for meetings? We want to uh, discuss new forms of resistance we want to bring on the street. And then it's, it starts step by step that the house becoming the spot for the, for the people who were organizing the resistance. We were not 
in any form going there and offering, they realize that, that it's an opportunity, it's there, the door is open. And of course this was not a Michael Bormann's exhibition, so we don't, didn't have had any insurance values on the wall, so we could open the whole house. And then they meet, and then they use this exhibition again as a tool. As, because there were so much references next to, to the uh, cure information about Stuttgart 21, that they start to uh, use it as a working space. Uh, this is uh, also when we're speaking about the art system and the, the media art system. One of the nicest meetings and ideas was next five minutes in Amsterdam, a volume which doesn't exist anymore, where everybody, all in this initiative who were invited have had five minutes to talk about, and then whoosh, some, someone took the plug of, of, the, of the speakers. So, and we copied that and invited all resistance groups to introduce in 10 minutes what they the moment doing. Uh, then uh, Yvonne starts uh, a workshop with a ride to the city. We make a, a compilation of uh, all the information around the project, but also extra text like about uh, other spaces by, by Foucault or uh, uh, Bourdieu, etc., etc., about the city, about corruption, about lobbyism, uh, about media. And we put that all on one CD because it was too much copyright issues in it, we couldn't put it online. So the people came into, at the desk of the Kunstverein and made a copy. Um, so this was the whole process around this project and this is still going on. This is maybe a week ago in the same space where we have had all the conference. And this was uh, two days after the last opening of Sergio Ceballos. Uh, where we have in the moment there's a new educational program uh, where the green government, uh, the right, uh, green government uh, wants to implement uh, the term homosexuality in sexual education and we have a lot of right-wing resistance against it uh, and the initiative used our uh, outside surface this is a banner uh, homophobia is see can be healed. Um, the funny thing is this, because the police didn't know what they, I told everybody who's hanging there something that was more action. Please say that you are a member of the Kunstverein, because <laughs> they couldn't control the 3,000 members. So we, everybody who was outside and doing something was immediately a member of the Kunstverein. <laughs> and with this uh, situation, he was in a different space. The public sphere changed. The, the police didn't know exactly where they are. They are in private property, uh, is that still the public sphere? So they really didn't know what to do in this situation, so they, they changed the tour of the demonstration. Hmm. And then we moved this everything to another side. This, all of this is every time has a feedback relationship to the programmation in the, in the Kunstverein itself. This is a you're looking here in the exhibition of Daniel Garcia and Luca, Post Capital. Uh, this was much more complex than only this part with this Sovain's uh, tower, the Sovain's tower. But uh, it was also that he offered uh, this, this, uh, this opportunity to, to download. And it needs time that people accept an art institution, enter it, and come in with their hard drive, plug their hard drive in, and start to copy. And uh, at the end of the exhibition, there were uh, piles of hard drives <laughs> and these labels. In Dortmund, my hometown, it wouldn't be possible. Everybody would steal the hard drives. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the video has worked so There were piles of hard drives and these labels saying, please don't stop the computer. We will come tomorrow when we go. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah. I don't know how much time is here, but uh, I mean, the, the, the thing is always how, how you. Um, how you? Hmm? Okay. Okay. <laughs> now? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the other issue is, of course, uh, I mean, positioning yourself in a, in, a, in, a, in a local political conflict and not being neutral, but showing your position in that conflict. The other thing I, I talked about is all this, this, this discussion of copyright and the most really strange thing I experienced was with this film. It's it's a film by Chantal Ackerman about um, um, Pina Bausch 
And what it shows is a, is a dance by Lutz Förster. Um, oh, 15 minutes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, the copyright issue. So, so this is this um, film from Chantal Ackermann about Pina Bausch, and we sh wanted to show in an exhibition just one minute of this film, which shows this wonderful dance from Lutz Förster about, um, again, about a music piece by um, George Gershwin, The Man I Love. Um, and we started with the archive of Pina Bausch and they didn't know really where is the copyright. And uh, Chantal Ackermann, I think mean, that was the same. And I think found out it's a French, it, it's INA, uh, it's, it's a French institution who distributes um, films. In, yeah, and then they go back and forth. And then they say for this one minute, uh, when you show in a period of, of <laughs> 10 weeks or so, this cost like four and a half thousand euros, and we said no way, and we started the negotiation, and we ended up with 600 euros, finally. <laughs> then came this video, and it had this logo. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, sorry, you made a mistake, because you put more or less in the image the logo. And they said, no, no, you have to show it like this, because it's ours. Yeah. I'm very happy that there are people who can remove this, so we just removed it, we didn't ask anybody and showed it without the logo because I thought this is impossible and there was actually not, because actually we should have contacted and we did not yet uh, the, the Pina Bausch archive and also Chantal Ackermann saying this is the way they present your work, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, so, but but there is no time. But, uh, but there, there was this this moment where you say when when somebody from Ina comes, they probably then make a problem. But we are not discussing this anymore. We're just putting out that logo because it's. <laughs> well, another one who's under uh, the totally copyright control in Germany, and if you have a more critical uh, content to produce about Joseph Beuys. Don't ask Eva Boyce for the permission of the images for your publication. She's uh, absolutely controlling all discourses uh, about which going out. She blocked uh, the PhD information that Joseph Boyce was never this hero uh, somewhere in the, in the Russian uh, tundra and something like that. So, of course, then the other thing is when artists really radically say, I need to integrate this piece in my presentation, I can't get this piece, like Pedro Romero died. And this piece is in the state gallery. And I again went there with no Suntec, he has a better digital camera than me. Don't say names. <laughs> but, okay. uh, he's in Korea, I don't care. Uh, so, and me, we went there and made photos. And then another colleague makes this metal frame in, in real three dimension. And I worked a lot on Photoshop so that it was for five seconds, it was looking as if the real object is there. The real object, which was this metamorphosis from the uh, crown, crown of the uh, crown of the Tsar, even uh, the terrible, into this piece relic. But you need to know that, I mean, it's, it was not so much that Pedro wanted to have this piece in the exhibition, if you know the work of Pedro, he's very much working with the fake. So it was very clear that we wanted to have a fake of Joseph Boyce, but of course we didn't ask. Um, and maybe this is then becoming a little bit back to, to Leibniz, because we're speaking about at least at the end of the story about aesthetical practices. We're speaking about the structure of, of the visible, which is part of the visible and, of, and how come it into this uh, structure. We're speaking about artistic methodological approaches which help us incredible to interpret our institutional perspectives. This is a diagram of a production of an ensemble by Anna Hoffmann. Um, and I, every time you come totally sentimentally, I, I met her over two years, she was incredibly important for me. But this is this, what you see here, that's as principle her looking down on her knees. And from there she interpreted the different ways how she started to work in the structure of an ensemble. What is an ensemble? An ensemble could look like, this was on documenta uh, 87, uh, this was about power gestures, uh, uh, very much along at the start late uh, 80s about the German heavy painters who blocked the intelligent development of German art, like 
Richter, Olke, Lüffertz, I would put them in the same pot of vegetables. Um, and she developed this out of this element. This was the person who came to close her and she made a snapshot and then this figure was there. And then she started, she put it in some place, then she started a mediation and or a catalyst. She starts to make a drawing on it. The drawing was connotated with maybe a text she found in a, in a newspaper. So she adds a text to this. Uh, then she made a redrawing of the found food is this photo, not found, made photo, the drawing uh, and the text. Then she uh, overwrites the text in the drawing uh, she made. Then she puts that again to this, to this place. Then she makes a photo of this, then she makes from the photo a photo a canvas. Then she starts to write in the photo canvas. And so, step by step, out of thousands of pieces and <coughs> processual rethinking, rethinking, permanently retracing, but not, never finalizing. There was not a single ensemble at the end of her life which you could call finalized. It's hard to discuss how to exhibit it. Nowadays, it's a very difficult. So you, you find a lot of quotations, uh, you find a lot of found footage, you uh, find a lot of connotations and highlightings. What is important, what is, what is not important. Uh, she from herself said that maybe in one of the ensembles, the last contacts, the most idiotic things i ever done in my life. So I block your visits there. But when I make a photo and blow it up on a canvas and make it bigger, then I mean you. But if I show the ensemble without this corner, it's not complete. So this is uh, then when, when you think in the position of the institution along aesthetic practices, you never could fulfill uh, a certain kind of an ideological approach. You are permanently in this flux and permanently in this process. And one of the problems I would say nowadays is that institution uh, somehow try to finalize uh, their frame, their perspective. Um, zooming out, coming from, from the flat to the three-dimensional and uh, back, back to the flat. Um, so this is also to give you a hint when we, when we start to describe these different layers of spatial practices which clearly have a political agenda. Uh, it's not simply that you could literally from there go to the program and to the complexity, and one example is the complexity of the question, what is an archive? Anna Oppermann is highly dis was highly discussed after her death in the, in the, in the text in 94 uh, as the most sophisticated hyperlink structure. Mm -hmm. This was a term yesterday didn't appear as a hyperlink. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one of the terms of, of, of uh, uh, hyperlink, hypertext. One of these uh, uh, words which uh, were used for this kind also uh, of uh, art in the, in the mid-90s. Uh, would have been interesting when she wouldn't have died in 93. Um, this also means something for this kind of thinking, and Abi Warburg was already mentioned yesterday uh, a lot. This kind of thinking means also that you have no frontiers in what you use in your practice and what you let out in your practice. What, where you ignore copyright, uh, where you uh, ignore uh, all limitations of resampling of material. This was the first uh, um, tableau when Iris starts uh, and me starts to, I'm coming from visual arts, she at this time, to say the truth, I have, no, have had no idea about it at all. So she came from feministic studies. And, <laughs> yeah, it's not so good. But we start out of an archive to rethink between text and image. And then we reformulate, reformulate this relationship between <coughs> text and image also step by step with, with uh, the audience and with the public. Maybe we stop here. Thank you. Enough.
questions from the audience? No? Then uh, I would like to get the first question. Um, what kind of uh, consequences um, do your actions have um, kind of uh, on the political side and were there any restrictions or what consequences did you have to suffer? <laughs> Or did you have to suffer? I, I mean, luckily the, the regional government changed, so, so <laughs> <laughs> otherwise it would have been probably a problem. I mean, when we took the position to be, be against Stuttgart, um, I mean, to show that we are against this, this project, um, we were not one of these institutions who got a letter that says you must be neutral, because this is nice sometimes when you something between of private and public, because actually, the Kunstverein is a private association getting public fundings. And so somehow we were out of this, uh, this, this repression in a way. So sometimes it's really great to be private <laughs> if you can use it like this. Um, but of course, I mean, if, if the, let's say, the Mappus regime, I don't explain that too much, it would have been <laughs> a little bit longer than would have been. Probably had some consequences. So, this is why we, of course, discussed this uh, with the board, with the members, also with the staff. But um, finally, at the end of the discussion, the people said, Yeah, we were actually only fearing that you could be with the Stuttgart 21. So, that. Um, but there were, I mean, not in that sense, so, so there were no, no consequences. I even would more say that one of the results that we opened the door and that people used the space for meeting, um, that, that because that was from the very beginning our idea when we saw the glass track, this glass box, that this is an ideal place in the city location to open it up and to give it a certain kind of free access. And that was were the first people who came, and then now now you have artist group meeting there, uh, the, the Anstifter, which is also political. So now now it is used by very different groups, people, artists. Uh, when I mean we just they they, they phone us and then we check the, the list if there is time, and then they just go. Um, well, uh, fascists. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> an uh, alternative for Germany also. Well, the ADF was asking if they could be there, and we said no. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, we have a position also with this. It's not like saying we open the door and everybody can come. So, but but like this, somehow, the, the it's another Kunstverein now. It's it's also not that it's not about that people now all visit our exhibition. We do not connect this. This is not like not a trick to, to somehow get the people. Um, but but it somehow has but it has an impact on of course, of course on the people who meet there and on the whole atmosphere and situation. Also maybe to coming back to the question of neutrality and also to give the foreign guests a little bit an, an, an image. This was at, uh, there was a, of course the Kunstverein is 180 something years old, so it, it's hard to touch. So it's a protected space, this is no doubt. It has this position in the city. And if the, it's identified with the resistance, this means also that it is so much part of, of, of an established space that uh, the politicians, uh, as a third point, have to accept that this institution in the moment is not functioning under uh, these circumstances as they want it should function. They have to accept it. They can't say, no, we don't want that. It's impossible. We are too much and we are too big. Uh, in Bittigheim, uh, there was a little Wartesaal. It's a, a social uh, cultural center for, for this low level uh, of, of theater, blah, blah, blah. They get 5,000 uh, euro um, a month, a year of, uh, support uh, from the local government. And they took position in Stuttgart 21, and a week later, with giving in the reason, the city parliament meet, and they said, we will cut down your subsidy by 100% because you put position. A political, a political group, a political administra administration said that. This is open censorship. Yes. This was the atmosphere. This is totally forbidden. They act completely illegal. 
and they've done that on full stage without any consciousness about the fact what they are doing. So uh, this is this was a strange experience also for a lot of people in the city to see this this moment that this is still possible that in a in a moment of conflict the right wing it was the uh, uh, liberals the Christian uh, Democratic Union uh, and then an association of bourgeois uh, 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 come on what you call it? a company owner they have also their own party. <laughs> But on the opposite side now, I mean, the, the government was changing, but, but um, so there was already, when we had this big demonstration for the cuttings, on a certain way, the, the politicians were also in a positive sense shocked because they never saw, they thought, yeah, these are these, you know, these artists that nobody will care about. And then they were looking and thinking, wow, so many people. <laughs> and also now with the glass box, they are like, they, they notice that it's different because you know the parliament is also in our building now, so they somehow are in contact with us and they see these people who are all the time doing strange things in our building. So they, they somehow understand that this is not only this kind of um, art ghetto. Uh, so, and, and even the last time I, I talk, we talked about um, the usage of this building, whatever, so, so there was a politician who said, well, this building is not about big visitors' numbers. So, so it's more the opposite that you see uh, that, 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 that there is a in positive, positive sense. resonance, actually, uh, on the political side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But maybe there's another question. Yeah. I mean, to get... <laughs> so maybe you have two of us. It's it's <laughs> <laughs> for, for the price of one. <laughs> and, uh, but because the question, because the question of, of neutrality is then also, then you turn into a certain kind of question which has to do with the complexity of a democratic system and how the democratic system in this old Western world changed. Because this law on neutrality for people in the administration was in the beginning so that when the political field took a decision which is not uh, can be uh, it's not correct in a sense of law of constitution etc etc the administration have to stay neutral and have to say to the politicians no we don't do it nowadays after 60 years of lobbyism and party organizing of, of jobs in this administration it's the opposite Nowadays it's turned totally in the opposite. Nowadays the law says uh, you have to, the administration has to stay neutral because it has to follow political decisions. And they are not longer allowed to say they are wrong. So this is, this is what we can add also as a platform where the people maybe are totally integrated now in this resistance against the train station. We can request that as an institution as an official institution, the skills in a de democratic landscape and where they are at least grounded. And we can bring that together with maybe an expertise which more interpretates in the, the, the uh, context in which this resistance is, uh, is operating. So there's a certain complexity where the institution also is very funny or very nice. They could slow down a moment of action to reflect again on the position where you are to say this is the point uh, in which you act next. And they can do it as you see also in the flux, in a, in a permanent performance and very quick. Any other questions? You won't answer so <laughs> <laughs> It's fine. <coughs> okay. There's these blogs, and then there's uh, it's like worst thing that can happen is that you get uh, uh, you know in the comments section you get someone who is you know superficial but wants to be like a groupie or something, and, and all he has to say is thank you for a great post. Uh, <coughs> I hate that. It's awful, right? And that's exactly what I want to do now. And this doesn't allow you to answer. <laughs> uh, this is very fucking amazing. I just want to pronounce this. I want to say this loud with the help of this device here. <laughs> this is fucking amazing. Thank you. No, 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 no,
actually I was, when I was saying that there is this unexpected disobedient guest, I was say, saying, I, I should refer to Vuk, but I said, actually, I expect him saying, this is all shit what you are doing. But now you're completely unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> Oder soll ich jetzt? Ja, wir haben ein Teilschedule.